Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and on the last videos, I did promise you I would show you different ways to embellish your rope bowls. So I'm going to give you some great ideas, lots of ideas, and there's so many ways you can have fun with this and just change it up. So just for starters, obviously you know all about using the fabric and you can wrap your whole rope in fabric for a great effect or you can choose to just do some accent colors on a basket and just have a little bit of color. Now I'm just going to say that all of these ideas and all of these rope bowl videos are in my how to do rope bowl playlist. So you'll be able to find all the how to's in that list and I'll leave that link in the description box below for you. This one here, for those that you did not see this one perhaps, but some people say, well, what if you dye your rope? Well, I did that. I actually did dye my rope and I had several different colors on this one. And I was dyeing macrame cord and the rope for the baskets at the same time. And of course, these are all like really nice spring colors. And I did this for an Easter celebration. And as well, I had made little tiny, cute little individual baskets that I put out for the place setting. Another option is change up your thread color. Instead of having the same color thread so you don't see it, you might want to accent it. Now, what you can do with this as well is on your top thread, have the white thread to match the rope. And then on your bobbin thread, this is where this is going to show, is do your accent colors. And you can even change it up. Start with some blue and then start with some brown and then start with some yellow. And you could have stripes of color going up just by it being the thread. And if you want this to be really noticeable, then just bring down your length of your zigzag so it'll be a really solid stitch and a really solid look. I didn't want to show you this one up really close because this is the very first basket I made on the FAF machine, my new sewing machine. So I just trying it out. It made a really solid basket, but my sewing isn't the best. I don't want to show you really too close up. <laughs> but just giving you ideas on another way to embellish. And here's another fun thing to do if you want to add some lettering. I'm a beach girl, so I added the words beach bliss and if you're not good at freehanding your letters, that's okay. You can come in and find yourself a stencil and then just bring your stencil over and then you can just come in and draw in the outline and then you've got your outline done. And when you're doing your stenciling, you're gonna find that of course, it doesn't have the complete letter. So obviously you're just gonna trace around the area that you've got and when you take it off when you go to paint it you will just fill in and this will come across and you'll have your complete letter and again if you're using air erasable fabric marker no problem this will erase and now you've got your whole solid letter to paint into and on this particular one I purposely left it so it's broken up a little bit so it looks like it's weathered so it's kind of a weathered sign look or you can paint on a design. And for this particular one, I just used basic cheap acrylic paint from the dollar store or Michaels, and I painted on a design. And again, if you don't want to freehand your design like I did, you can use a stencil again and just grab a large stencil with a V and then turn it upside down and choose the stencil you want. And this I just painted as well. Not sure about what design to make, well, you can certainly go online and type in all these different types of designs, whether it be Navajo or Greek or Aztec, whatever design you want, and you'll have lots of ideas there for different patterns that you want to make. And for your brushes, I like the flats or an angular. Uh, one that's on the stiff side because you want to be able to get into the little crevices of the rope. So let's come in and grab some paint. And 
And then I find the easiest way oh, is get a paintbrush that isn't a cheap dollar store one. <laughs> that thing just fell right off. Okay, let's try that again. I'm just squishing my basket down so it's just easier to, to paint this. And I'll come in and just start my outline. So coming in this way with the edge of my brush and just make your outline. This is where the little point of the brush comes in handy. So you can get in the little crevices. Just pushing the brush back and forth. Now, if you don't want to use acrylic paint, and you want this to be a little bit more lasting and say you possibly might want to wash it, then you can also use fabric paint. So just look at Michael's or whatever craft store online. And that's how easy that is. Just let that dry and like I say, these purple lines will disappear and they will air dry. And here's another basket with the words relax. Don't we all need to do that right now? And this one I didn't paint on. I used Sharpie markers, permanent markers. And then once you've got your drawing in again, you can use your stencil if that's easier for you. And then you can just come in and do an outline in a darker color just to make it a little bit more bold. And there you go, a little relax and pops a little bit more with the outline and just with sharpie markers. And I also added a little palm tree. Why not, eh? And if you're not good at freehanding artwork, there is a zillion stencils out there that you can get and you can draw in your areas that way. And these ones happen to be a reusable stick-on stencil. So you can just peel it right off. And this is exactly what I did popped it on like so and then I've got my little area that I can draw in. Another way to embellish is you can sew on embroidery thread in any color of choice. I like to use the DMC because I just find it's higher quality than the stuff you get at a dollar store and this particular one has six strands but I'm going to use one that's a little bit thicker. This is still a cotton yarn, but this one has eight strands. And I did buy this online. It's called Cotton Golden Sun. Then you want to think of what type of design would you like? Well, I think I might come in and do something fun like this. So maybe I might come in and do this type of design right here. So I've got a down triangle and an up triangle. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my gauge just because it's easy to use and it's got my marker on here. And I'm gonna mark it off every one inch or about 2.5 centimeters. Again, using my air erasable pen and I can go around and make all my marks. With these metal sewing gauges, they're actually bendable, which is kind of works well to this advantage if I want to contour it onto my actual basket here. So decide where you want your top design to be. If I want my top triangle to come from here to here, then my bottom one's going to start about here. So I think I'll go with my third row down. And so what I'm going to do is just pop a dot on the each side of my one inch. And I'll just go around and mark at every inch, or of course, that would be two and a half centimeters. Now, because this is a coiled basket, where we started, we were starting on the third one down. Now, we were up on this one here. Here's the third, but it's gonna be down. So you'll just have to play with that a little bit. And obviously, you're not gonna be exactly dead on with all your markings. So just uh, 
make it so it's approximate here. So we'll just put our, our middle one right in here. So it will drop down your design on the back side. So I always do that on the back side where my, my handle is, or my, my lid is joined. And now for your center ones, you can definitely go in with a ruler if you want to, if you want to be exact and get your middle dot in there right in the middle of these two coming down, but I'm just going to come in and eyeball it. So I'm coming back in now with my air, actually my washable because I have to go out and do some errands. And I just wanted to let you know that, um, let's say here was my dot up here that I made. And then I'm coming in and I'm putting my dot here. But I'm not going to join all the way to the top because I want a gap. I want that to be broken, that design. So I'm just making it as a guide so I can come down here and bring this design here. And then in the middle here, I'm going to be coming from the middle. I'm going to come down and I'm going to stop there. So on each side, there's a break here and there's a break here for the design. All right, so I've got all my design drawn on and I've cut, oh, about a meter or a yard of my yarn. And I'm just going to tie a knot in the end here. I like to wrap it around my finger, do a twirl, and there's my knot. So obviously I'm going to start from the inside and I'm going to try to come into the in between the ropes rather than in the middle of the rope. It'll be a, just a little tiny bit easier for sewing purposes. So there we go. I managed to poke right out in between the two rows. So we're going to come down and you can choose to go this way, this way. It doesn't really matter. So, and of course, these are just guidelines, which is nice to have a guideline. So this I've got right here. I'm going to come in between my two right here because it's much easier to get the needle in between the ropes than it is through the rope. Now, this is where we had to drop down our design a little bit because of the coils, um, because we're down here and on this row, it goes up to here. So I'm going to drop it down already to this part right here so I can carry on with my design on this row. So I'm coming in between these two ropes right here. On this side, I can now come back, back and finish my V on here and come right back to the same hole and form my V on this side. And the same thing, now I'm going to cross over on the back here over to my next one. And back down to our point. Now we're going to have to come up. And back down. And continue that pattern throughout your whole design. And when you're running out of um, embroidery cotton, then you can just come into your last stitch here. Don't come all the way through. Poke your needle through that loop so it will tie a, a knot. And we'll do that one more time just to make sure it's good and secure. And there we go. And we can cut this one off and just uh, thread up another one and go again. I will finish that top round on my own, but I just wanted to show you for the second one here. And again, I've cut about uh, a meter and I've tied my knot in the end. And let's come in to our second row here. So being that we had to adjust this a little bit because it's the coil basket. So this row will be down to here. And as you can see, it's going to drop down to here. So I'm going to make this one drop right here by this with the first one here and so I'm going to come in between these two ropes right here and I'll start right there.
Now you could choose to do a different color on this one down here, but I think I'm going to stay with my black. Now if you've used the fabric pen that is washable, then you can just come in with a spray bottle and spray it. And you'll just see those lines just magically disappear. And I ended up doing a little bit of a star pattern on the top just for something different. And on the inside, we've got a star on the inside of the lid. And there's the inside. It's kind of a fun little pattern too. Now I'm going to show you how to make all these fun little tassels to go around to really finish this basket off. I love this. So um, don't look at the evenness here. We're going to go around and we're going to clean that up afterwards. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting three millimeter macrame cord in four inch lengths. And I need a few of them. So instead of cutting each one individually, I'm just going to cut a piece of cardboard and make it four inches long. Let's grab one of my baskets so it's not uh, rolling all over the place and keep wrapping around. So I'm just going to hold that with my finger here in the middle. and then cut them on this end and cut them on this end. Now I've got a bunch cut all at once. To tie on my little tassels, I'm using 100% crochet cotton, it's DMC, and it is super mercerized cotton. Mercerized cotton is really strong. If you try to uh, grab this and break it with your hands, chances are you probably wouldn't be able to break it. That's why I like to use this for things like this. So we're going to come in and I'm spacing these each about a, oh, about a quarter inch apart or that would be a 0.64 centimeters and bringing it through and again about the same distance back through again. And I'm going to leave a little loop here. And then we're going to take one of our pieces that we've cut at four inches of the macrame cord, fold it in half. Taking the folded end, we're going to place it inside our loop, like so. And now this loop is coming down to the bottom. We're just going to take our ends and pass it through the loop, like so. We're making locks head knots is what we're doing. And we're just going to push that up, tightening it, tightening it up till it's right up to the top. And then once it's nice and secure, I'm just holding on for now with this. You can come in with either a hair comb or you can come in with a pet slicker. This is a pet slicker and it works really well to pull out the little strands of your macrame cord. It doesn't take long to brush that out with one of these. And there you have it. So let's do one more with you. and continue around until you've got them all the way around. So I'm going to add on a nice clear bead this time for the top to help lift up that top if you want to. And again, I've used some mercerized cotton to attach it and knot on the end. And I've got about two feet here, which is about so 61 centimeters. So this time I'm going to come through and I'm going to try to hit into some more rope here rather than going in between um, because I want to make sure that is held in really good. Now sometimes it's really tight to get that through so you might want to grab yourself a thimble to do that and you can press against the end of the thimble and it won't hurt your fingers. And of course I've got to show you this thimble. This used to be my grandmother's 
and it's got the little pretty beads on the end and look at that the decoration on it isn't that neat this is a very old thimble I'm happy I've got it so use the thimble if you need to to push against the end of that uh, needle to get it to push through if you need to on goes our bead and I'm just gonna find my center and go down so it's centered on the top of my lid here and just slide it around so it's sitting so you've got your holes on the side and it's secure so I'm just gonna go around a few more times Now, once you've gone through three or four times, thinking of my grandmother here, she was such a lovely, lovely, sweet lady. Um, I'm gonna now come up and I'm gonna just come over. It doesn't really matter where you come up, on the side where you're used to coming up, but close to where you're underneath your bead or button, whatever you're putting on. Now, once you've come up there, we're not gonna go back through, but my grandmother always taught me to do this when we're sewing on any button on a shirt or dress anything, any button. Take it and wrap it around three times. Three or four, doesn't matter. That's really gonna secure that button and make it good and solid. Always do that for any button that you're sewing on. And now I'm going to come back down. I'm holding this tight so I don't lose that tension and we're going to come back down to the inside here. Once you're on the inside, then we can just come in here and do the same thing we did before. And if, if you find it's hard to get in here, then you can always just reverse your lid and then it's easier to get in here to tie a knot. And for the last two here, because we're on the row here and it's a coral basket, so this isn't going to match up. I'm just going into my rope here and then into my rope here, just to sort of have a gradual coming down so they meet up. And I did that purposely on the back side of the basket, so it will be just fine. You can put a piece of cardboard underneath these if you want to, and then brush them out that way so you're not digging into your rope or catching any threads and breaking your stitching and now you can go around and just trim it all up and make it nice and neat and tidy and I have decided to add some fringe on the top so I'm going to make these ones a bit longer so I've got a piece of cardboard that is six inches long and I've just taped on a piece of macrame cord on the table here just so it's easier to Put these on and I ended up tying on 10 larks heads and I will just tie it right on right over left nice and tight and left over right And trim up your ends so they're nice and even and then we'll be all done.